afternoon, everyone. Uh, come all the way from Wales, so um, a bit of a strange accent. I'm also second language English, so please bear with me. Um, so English is not my natural language of choice. Uh, and you'll see today in the video that you'll see some Welsh, so hopefully you learn something new in terms of the Welsh language. So, uh, this is the local authority I work for, which is Conway. Uh, it's a very historical authority, it's got great castles, great mountains, sea, but it's also a very small local authority made up of only 15,000 people. Uh, it's an ageing population we have, the median age is only, well, it's 47 years of age. Only 57 primary schools and 7 secondary schools and we have one additional learning needs school. So, in terms of what we've been um, doing in Conway over the last 18 months, we've been going through a period of transformational change in our local authority. And the reason for this transformational change is looking at the evidence and the background of our children in terms of Wales as a nation and Conway as a local authority. And what we know is that four out of every ten of our children aged 11 and age 16 are physically active. And that is the minimum guidelines in terms of physical activity levels. What we also know is that 40% of our children are either overweight or obese. And as children get older, that level of obesity, uh, inactivity gets worse. And what we know is that um, by adulthood, 60% of our adult population are either overweight or obese. Uh, we also uh, perform badly in relation to the United Kingdom. So Wales didn't do that well. And in terms of Europe, we're also number one in Europe in terms of obesity and, and overweight young people. What we also know is that the likelihood of you being overweight or obese, especially if you live in a less affluent area, and also the links between obesity and levels of education. Uh, in terms of physical activity rates in Conway, uh, what we do have every two years in Wales is a school sports survey. Now the school sports survey um, aims to survey every child aged between 7 and 16. Now the last round of school sports survey results, and this is a biannual survey, 38% of children in Conway were active. We were performing pretty badly, to be honest with you, on a national level. Only 50% of our children felt that PE and sport help you to lead a healthy lifestyle. Now, to me, that was pretty low, and that suggested a bit of an issue with our physical education lessons, our provision in our schools. 60% um, of children, less than 60% of children enjoy PE. Um, and less than half of the children that um, participated in extracurricular sport and activity enjoyed that experience. So, when we look at, um, at our programming in Conway, we had some issues, and then the other issue is only 106 minutes were allocated to physical education per week. So, you know, the national guidelines was 120 minutes, and we were struggling on that front as well. Um, the biggest worry for us is that children living in uh, less affluent um, areas in Conway were less likely or far less likely to be members of a sports club. So 80% of those children living in the least deprived in comparison to 50% of the most deprived. Now, with all this in mind, um, myself, my team in Conway, we started looking at, right, is our program fit for purpose? We've been in existence for over 10 years, and physical activity rates were stagnant, they weren't improving much. Um, was our structure in our local authority um, fit for purpose? And the answer was no, to be honest. Uh, back last year, we're only talking about a 12 month programme here. Last year, we had a curricular support programme which uh, prioritised <coughs> secondary schools, so children aged 11 to 16. Uh, our school sport program, 70% of our funding from Sport Wales, from government, uh, was allocated for secondary school pupils. So, the other problem with that, we did nothing with children aged 0 to 7. So, the way our funding streams work, we were just concentrating on 7 to 16, but most of that funding was going to 11 to 16 years. 
We did have a program called the Young Ambassador Program, which is a UK-wide scheme, which looks at uh, pupil voice, pupil engagement, but we, we, we'd only started the process in terms of that pupil engagement. And a lot of our work was about inter-school festivals and competitions, uh, which was great, but it took a lot of time in terms of officer time as well. Now, in order for us to make that difference in terms of physical literacy and that journey of every child having a positive journey, um, we decided that uh, from 2014 to 2015 onwards, we were going to transform our program so that physical literacy was the key driver. Um, and the way we were going to do it was ensuring that we um, concentrated on 3 to 13 year old populations because we thought this was the area that we could make the biggest difference. We looked at empowering pupils so that all our programs, especially in secondary schools, were pupil led in terms of them having a voice for, sport, for their own sport. We looked at how do we engage with schools? Do schools share best practice amongst each other? Because in the past that wasn't happening. So it was all led by us and schools, and we had some excellent schools, they weren't sharing their, their best practice. Um, the other area that we were doing was parental engagement because we can do great stuff in schools, we can have great teachers, we can have great after school clubs, but if parents aren't engaged and if parents don't realise the benefits of physical activity, then it all stops at school level. So that was an area that we were going to look at as well. And then lastly, and we've spoken a lot about it, is the poverty agenda. So what we knew and our programmes were heavily geared towards 3 to 13 year olds within primary schools, within secondary schools and finally looking at community engagement. How do we engage with our communities to ensure that children had access to high quality provision? And where can we get children active? Um, and it, it's really simple, I'm quite a simple person to be honest with you, but um, <laughs> um, where can we get children active? We can get children active in school. We have a target audience, we have a captured audience there. Uh, in school, after school provision, and then after, uh, within the community and at home. <coughs> what we also designed were these physical literacy resources. Now, we got lots of support from Sport Wales over the years. Teachers have been on lots of training, but what our teachers were telling us, well, yeah, we've had the training, but we haven't got the expertise in-house. Now, in Wales, Every primary school teacher in Wales has to teach every subject area. I'm not sure if that's the same you know, in Canada, but we do not have expert practitioners in our primary schools. So the support available for them was very limited. So we have we created uh, some resources that are all on iTunes U. Uh, basically, uh, three units of work, uh, developing skills for um, three, well, two to six years of age, uh, practicing the skills 6 to 8 and then applying the skills from 9 to 12. Now, uh, that re those resources were based on the hierarchy of gross motor skills which was developed by Sport Wales. So every child, in terms of the teaching and learning and physical education, were doing these skills. So we're talking basic skills such as crawling, running correctly with good mechanics, looking at body management actions and then manipulative actions and it was all progressive and stage not age related. So um, that was a resource that we created um, and, it took, and it really it only took two to three months. Uh, mind, this is a year's programme uh, over the first year, so what we're talking about is September 2014 through to April 2015, what we there was we finalised the resource. We then implemented a program, and we implemented uh, implemented the program in 14 primary schools. And the implementation was that every teacher in those 14 primary schools, every class, would have support from a curriculum mentor for a period of four weeks. So we would have liked it to be longer, but we have funding for it. Uh, the other big change that we did over the course of the year was we changed our programme from 11 to 16 year olds um, so that empowering pupils was the key driver so all our secondary programmes were driven by our young ambassadors and in all our secondary schools we had a young ambassador council who basically developed a programme of extracurricular sports and physical activity um, and then the other aspect we did was we looked at um, creating a, be a 
a better system for sharing good practice through TeachMeet. So stuff that we wanted to develop since April was better community engagement resources and also the parental resources as well. So hopefully I'm going to show you a film which encapsulates all that work. It, it, it is eight minutes and please bear in mind that half of it is in Welsh. So um, <laughs> I'm going to the okay? We're here today in a scholar podcast to deliver our leaders of learning training. Uh, the main purpose of the leaders of learning role is to provide mentoring for every member of staff in every one of our primary schools. Uh, the reason we've appointed them is because we know that they are our expert practitioners in our schools and they will provide um, their knowledge and expertise and share that knowledge and expertise with other members of staff. My name is Louise Roberts, I'm a year two teacher in Esco Grand Galley and um, I'm here today, I've been a part of the project from the beginning and just to develop more understanding of it and share good practice and ideas with other members of staff who are hoping to go on the same journey as me. I'd bod yn bleser bod y ran o'r cynllun yma, mae'r cynllun yn wefreiddiol, mae'r unigryw, mae'r wahanol, mae'r rhywbeth Dw i'n meddwl bod neb arall wedi ystyried i'n neud, a, a dw i'n meddwl bod, bod ni'n wedi dod yn bell iawn mewn blwyddyn. The best part is watching the pupils, uh, how engaged they are. They love the session, they are fully engaged for the whole time. You're giving them opportunities to be creative, to be independent. It's very much a child-centred approach, so to, to, to see where they take you with the session and because they feel that you're using their ideas, they are fully absorbed. Excellent. Well done, everyone, and stop. I really enjoyed working with other staff in other schools because even though I'm a so-called expert, it's lovely to get other ideas off other people and you learn things from going around other schools and seeing how they do it. Just having the opportunity to share good practice. I'm going to raise the ground with but more fruit for it to come on. I'm going to wait to come at it the right now. I'm going to wait to hear why. I'm going to miss it. I can't mend the bottom line. I'm not going to need to see all that ahead now because my school young. Cynnar fydd o'n i hynny nhw, mae rhai o'r athrawon o'r ysgolion hynny rŵan wedi gofyn i, I gael bod yn arweinwyr a, a gyfent hwra hwn ac gyfent efo gam ymlaen. Mae'r ma brwd rydydd yma yn, yn, yn braf i weld. I went to watch Mike to see how he would mentor uh, the staff. So going in, watching how he delivered the sessions, had a good look through the pack myself. Slowly, week on week, I was taking over the process, taking the session myself, leading it with the pupils, uh, slowly mentoring staff at the same time, which is the most difficult part of it, is mentoring and taking a session. Um, uh, I was able to get a lot of in the first place. I was able to get a lot of money in the first place. I was able to get a lot of Lle, oedd wir yn dasblygu sgiliau elfen o'r plant, mae hynny yn, yn dwi'n meddwl yn gyfle, ffantastig. A mae hynny'n siŵr o, o godi safon, a mae hynny'n siŵr o wella sgiliau'r plant. We've been involved with the uh, physical literacy scheme since before Christmas. Um, Mike came in to mentor all the staff in the school. Um, everybody had four sessions, the children really enjoyed the sessions. I mean, we've been so lucky. I mean, we were one of the first schools to um, have the physical literacy project start. And it's just been such an opportunity. I can't believe how positive our teaching staff have been over this. They just love it. Every one of them, from the nursery class right the way up to year six. And what we found, it's just given the children so much confidence, so much motivation-wise. I've never seen anything like it. The skills that they're developing is just being used right the way through. Ma y llythynydd corfforol yn nifer o bethau, mae o'n sgiliau corfforol, mae o'n hyder ac yn cymhelliant, yn wybodaeth ac yn ddealltwriaeth ac yn nifer o gyfleoedd. Er mwyn cael gwybod pa gyfleoedd, mae o'n pobl ifanc ni eisiau cymryd rhan yn ynt, mae'n bwysig bod ni yn siarad efo nhw, a, a, a mynd yn ei wneud yna trwy'r cynllun um, llus gynhadon ifanc. I've been working a lot with the school council this year to develop our playground further. So 
they've decided on a plan to zone the playground into different areas of physical and creative activity. We've got a junk shed, we've done a lot with um, Rich Play, so the school council have written to local companies asking for junk that, or offcuts of things they don't want, so hope we improve that resource as well. It's incredible what the case of the Dusker and Hanwadal Boys are going with. My poor pet done in Gnaid, my mother of Ridney Gid, Ari Kavanu, I got Muni Guachanu, and the Diag Ostadinudim and Gakirani, Barnevani, Abonudim and Ran or process, or the Dihunim and Elwane, for he the Nuvod and Ran or process, my boy Sigan Boni and Grandari, Ari Kai Snow. I'm a Kentlin, this can happen with the dust book, it's our dust of wooden Dutha, Makin and the Liskin hat on Eviv and in a skull on Kundrad, Akin and Skull and Ukrad, Makin Bobby and a skull Ukrad, the Kungor, Horian Skull and Enetrich, and Benotol just at Horian. I'm Hinanroid Kavla, he Liskin hat on up within Scythe, he would in Indic Tree, he thought that's a gilith, and when Travot, Kavlia, Sidar Gal, the known as Dutta Gwersi, Akin Alker Shalak, a roller skull, Akin a Gaminet heavy. Yn ysgol Dyffryn Comwyd, dan ni wedi adnabod bod lefel cyfranogiad y merched yn isel yn cael ei chyfeirio 3, 4 a 5. Dan ni wedi dipyn o waith gyda'r merched wedi gyfer cyngor chwaraeon. A maen nhw wedi blaen o'r eithi codi lefel cyfranogiad y merched i fynnu chi. Dan ni wedi rhoi rhaglen artigilydd o weithgareda mae'r merched eisiau ei gwneud. Mae'n hynod y bwysyn mwyn i'n digrau ndor y merched, a dyna pam mae'n cymaint o o ferched wedi troi fyny i'n sesiwn â ni ac o holiad diron da i'n di gwneud maen nhw wrth ei boda gyda'r sesiwn yn yna ac eisio i ni rhoi mwy o sesiwn amlaen yn y dyfodol chi. Da ni hefyd yn gweithio'n agos gyda'r gymuned, mae'r clwb rygbi yn gweithio'r y cyd gyda'r ysgol. Yn mes tachwedd, bod dwytha na thni ar opus ata fi a gofyn sy'n ei fodlo wedi hyfforddi'r genod yma'n unig yn clwb rygbi Nant Conwy. Amlwg bod pobl eisio chwarae rygbi yn, yn yr ardal. A oedden nhw wedi cychwyn yn yr ysgol efo sesiynna yn fano chi um, gyda Elin Royal. A wedyn dyna be oedd yr link perffaith iddo wedi fewn i'r, i'r clwb wedyn. A oedd y cyfleid nhw chwarae ar ddysyl yn fwy na dim ond yn yr ysgol. A dwi'n edrych chi'n mlaen yn arw iawn i'r cama nesa. Achos os dyr i'r lledan i rwan ac o'r lleoedd yn ni, a'r dasblygiad mor cadarnol sydd wedi cymryd lle. Um, mi fydd hynod o'n hynod y ddiddorol i weld lle byddwn ni o fewn blwyddyn. Um, dwi'n teimlo yn gyffyrddus iawn bod ni'n mynd i'r cyfeiriad iawn, a dwi'n teimlo bod yr athrawon yn prynu mewn i hwn, a maen nhw yn ei fabwysiadu fo efo'r brwd frydedd yma. The basic skills that those children are learning and practising within the school life has also impacted on their other subjects, and it really, really has made a difference. We want every child to be physically active and physical literacy will be the key concept to enabling this to happen. Making sure that our children are exposed to high quality PE, have the right knowledge and understanding of why physical activity is important, will enable our children to become physically active for life. In terms of where we go from now, uh, year two, which will be from September on, we're going to be working with 20 new schools as part of the project. Uh, we have, as the video mentioned, we have leaders of learning, we have 14 expert practitioners within our primary schools where we commission their time to work with other schools. So the school to school visit, we see that as a really important tool for us in terms of sustainability. Um, obviously, the teach meets and sharing good practice among schools. Um, and then, and then a real, real, real big driver for us is how do we engage with parents and how do we work with parents because um, we have some really good examples of leading practice in the county but we need to ensure that those are shared. Um, and then the community programme, I just appointed a community uh, programme lead officer who will be responsible for working with local sports clubs, uh, with other local organisations such as our public health, um, guides and our uh, health trust uh, to work in partnership because really that collaboration has got to be, got to be the key driver for us. I'm also in negotiations with our CEO at Economy Council um, to provide a free programme for three to eight year olds in our county. 
And where I see that developing is if we look at that competency element, um, if we can ensure that children have um, have the proficiency in those life skill activities, then I think we're going to move forward and we can really drive the, this agenda forward. And those activities are every child being able to swim proficiently, every child being able to run proficiently, and every child being able to cycle and having access to cycling. So those are the, the real things that I'm trying to work with our CEO in, in Conway Council as well, um, moving forward. Um, We've also developed a strategy called the De Developing Active Confidence and Happy Young People and where we can affect change as an organisation here at Conway. Um, we want better local campaigning, we want a local campaign which um, tries to embrace physical literacy, the agenda of physical literacy. We want to empower all young people and all older people. We want to empower our people to um, make good, healthy lifestyle choices. So that um, engagement is really, really important. We also want to um, change our organisation. Another area, like I mentioned earlier with our Chief Executive Officer for um, Conway, as an organisation I would like us to have a health and wellbeing department which solely looks at health and wellbeing and having our pub pub other public sector um, organisations involved in that in that um, organ uh, department, so be a health and wellbeing department. And then lastly, we need more opportunities for our, our young people and for our older generation as well. We want those young people having high quality opportunities to participate in different types of activities. Um, finally, and this is the last slide, um, where we want to be in 2017 and where we want to be in 2020. Um, by 2017, all our primary schools um, and all our secondary schools will have had support in terms of the physical competency competency and physical literacy. Um, by 2017, every programme that we have is going to be people voice driven. It will be the young people who will decide their fate and their future. And that is a really, really important message today, really. Um, we want all our schools to share best practice and we want great practice in all our schools. And we want all parents to understand and make correct lifestyle choices. I think the parental engagement is going to be the, the trickiest and the toughest um, um, you know, action that we're going to have to undertake. But I think that's where we're going to make the difference. We've got to work with our parents, we've got to try and engage with them so that they're making the right choices for the young people. Um, we want to make sure through our physical literacy programme in our schools that children have the basic skills that they have, the fundamental movement skills, that every child has those uh, skill sets and tools. And then we want to make sure that our children are confident and motivated. And you know, if they do have the basic skills and those that ability to participate, then hopefully they'll have confidence and they'll have enjoyment um, to partake in different activities. And then by 2020, you know, our strategy says that all children will be physically literate by 2020. So looking back, uh, this is a programme over the course of a year, we've done a substantial amount of work. But the challenges ahead of us, so, you know, we've got big challenges ahead, and hopefully we can make that difference. Uh, lastly, um, my office is a brilliant at this, I'm hopeless to be honest with you. Um, if you want to follow our Twitter page, it's called at 2012, at Conway 2012. We do, you know, my, my office is a brilliant at tweeting and so on. We do also have a YouTube channel. Um, which is called Conway 2012. So all those videos, well, that video I showed you earlier, uh, we've got uh, two example lessons as part of the physical literacy program. And then obviously if you need any more information, you can email me and I'm happy to uh, respond. Thank you very much. So if anyone's got questions, we've got about five minutes now to do a Q&A, so. Thank you very much, it was excellent too. It's, it's neat to see another part of the world, so I really appreciate yeah. that. Um, just a question around the physical literacy intervention, or your book. What was the relationship between that and the physical education in Canada, we would call it curriculum, and our provinces have curriculum? So did that replace the, the physical education curriculum in Wales? Was it in addition to? 
you know, um, where we're working at the moment is we, we because it's early days, we're looking at our national, we do have a national curriculum which is going to change um, over the course of the next two years because we've just had a report being done, uh, driven nationally. Um, our physical uh, education curriculum is four areas of learning. So um, in those areas of learning, you have competitive, you have um, health, fitness, and well-being, uh, you have adult adventurous activities, and also we have creative activities. Now, where we see this intervention program uh, changing is with the physical literacy resources, all those activities, the four areas of learning in our national curriculum, is in that resource. So our teachers and our schools can either use that resource and deliver the national curriculum as a whole, or they can use bits of it. So for example, um, swimming. Swimming is uh, statutory within our national curriculum at Key Stage 2, which is 7 to 11 year olds. All the activities within that resource can also be applied in the pool. So where we see that developing is, we can see schools either adapting that resource fully, or they can use parts of it. Is it the teachers that are assessing the improvement, or is it people from your office? The teachers. Um, most of our schools use a program, a national program called Inserts, and uh, basically it's a it's a tool for assessment. So um, they use Inserts, and what we've done with the schools that have been part of the project this year, um, we've obviously got data going back three years in terms of their physical competency, and we're hopefully going to track the, uh, any changes that, uh, if it's having an impact, a positive impact. Uh, nationally, they're also looking at a, um, uh, a dragon challenge, which um, Sport Wales are introducing at the moment, but that is very early days. Are there opportunities for further support for Sport Wales and the teacher that they've done first for yeah, so, Sport Wales membership, and what do they look like? Yeah. Um, 14 primary schools have had the support this year. Um, the um, gentleman, Mike Griffiths, who you saw in the video, he was speaking Welsh. Um, he is our sort of um, leading person in terms of uh, the physical literacy program. He was the only person that we had at the start of the project, so it was only him who was going on mentoring. This is why we built uh, built our sort of capacity so that we have 14 leaders of learning. Because what that means is that Mike, next academic year now, will be going back to those 14 schools to sit down with the, um, the physical education lead person to see. Right, how is this developed? Do you need more support? Do you need any anything further from us as a team? So yeah, we've taken that into account. Is there a certain tool that you use to assess uh, physical literacy in the water for swimming? Uh, the assessment in swimming is, is purely, there's an assessment made every, uh, every year for 11 year olds, um, whether or not they can swim proficiently or not. And that swimming proficiently is whether or not they can swim 25 meters or needed whether or not they can submerge and re-emerge and tread water and do full circles in the pool. That's, that's the assessment. However, that is a continuous assessment and what we have done in Conway is we're trying to track children all the way from year one all the way through instead of just year six. Collaborating at all with other partners outside of the schools, like the community centers or the nonprofit centers? Yeah, we, we're collaborating with our local leisure centers. Um, our leisure centers are uh, just in a pilot program, which is the free activity for three to eight year olds. So they're utilizing the resource that we've used in the school, but in a, on a community basis. So we've started looking at that. Um, we're going to be evaluating that in the, in the coming months. <coughs> Uh, we're also uh, working in partnership with our local public health board, uh, with, the with the dietitians and the pediatric support <coughs> that they have within uh, North Wales as well. But uh, to be honest with you, that is a weakness that we do have in North Wales in comparison to England, where public health sits within the local authority, but we don't. So that's the next key driver for us. So I take it that the local authority comprises schools. Yes. Yes. Aha. So we, we that's the difference for us. Right. Our school system in BC is at the municipal level is separate from local government. Okay. okay. 
Okay. Oh, but it is a, um, it, it's a sort of at a distance, so we, we don't manage schools. Local authorities can't manage schools because every school has a governing body. So the governing body um, uh, runs the school. What we have done as part of this project was we provided training for um, every, uh, every governing body of those 14 schools. So the, uh, the local <coughs> management team of that governing body has had training uh, to uh, hopefully they're aware of what physical literacy is all about. We've got time for one more. There's another one, but please not. Can you talk a bit more about the Ambassador, the Young Ambassador Program, and what helped yeah. The Young Ambassador Program was set up by the Youth Sport Trust um, over in England, and obviously, as, in ways, we, we take things and we use them. Uh, the Young Ambassador Program looks at providing um, schools, um, and it initially it's been set up in our secondary schools to have a voice. So pupils, years ago, they, they weren't having a voice because the traditional PE delivery, especially the extracurricular sports provision, was based on what the teacher's knowledge and expertise was. So if you were a good rugby player, you would deliver rugby for your children and that would be it. Now, the Young Ambassador Programme provides youngsters with more of a voice. And where we're trying to work there is to have a school sport council which is, comprises of young ambassadors of different sectors of that school, those who like PE, those who like sport, and those who don't like sport, to come together and to discuss what, their, what the programme they'd like to be able to fill in the future. Okay, thank you very much for